Uh, we now come to the presentation of the Crick Award uh, to Dick Garland, Dr. Richard Lawrence Garland, but all of us who know him know him as, as Dick Garland. And that's a representation of the very personable character that, that he is. Um, it's an engagement with him and his colleagues that led to the formation of Crick. Um, after the um, the event of 9-11, the World Federation of Scientists, uh, realizing that there was a huge threat, decided to turn their minds to how to deal with terrorism. And it led to a deep division, because some scientists in the World Federation said we should use our science to defeat terrorism. And other scientists, particularly from the East, said we need to use our science to help us understand why do people get involved in this kind of destructive and self-destructive activity. And it almost led to a, a, a division or split within the World Federation of Scientists itself. Uh, but there were two colleagues uh, who were involved in this, in this issue, um, uh, which was under the chairmanship of uh, Ahmed Kamal, uh, a long-standing ambassador, uh, at the United Nations, uh, who was chairing things. And uh, two of these colleagues went to him separately. And one was Bertil Gallon uh, 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 from Switzerland, and the other was Scott Atron uh, from the United States. And they said, look, we're re very divided about this. Would you contact John and ask him to come and have a chat with us about this? Because we're almost in a place where we need a peace process amongst the scientists. This is really, this is really getting a very, a very deep division. And, uh, and so I, I, I went along, and there was a permanent monitoring panel on terrorism at, at the time, which was meeting. And Dick Garwin was one of the members of that uh, permanent monitoring panel. And we had a number of discussions about how we would understand the problem and how we would mitigate the problem. And eventually, uh, the outcome of this was to set up two uh, twin permanent monitoring panels, one of them on the mitigation of terrorism, which would be chaired by Dick Garwin, and one on the motivations for terrorism, which would be chaired by myself. But the two of us would continue to work together to try to understand how to deal with this, uh, this emergent phenomenon. Well, um, after a, a little while, some of us began to feel that uh, the World Federation of Scientists initiative was absolutely excellent. And, and Dick and his colleagues were very uh, amenable and easy to work with. But we actually needed to create some kind of organism that would enable us to do more research work. And that was the origins of Artis. Uh, Rich and Scott got together with a colleague called uh, Mark Sageman and set up Artis in the United States. I set up Artis Europe and we also set up Crick uh, here. And it, it came very much from that early work with the World Federation of Scientists. And, and, and so Rich and Scott and myself, uh, along with Harvey Whitehouse, became the founding fellows of, of Crick. And, and it has gone on from there. The first Crick meeting, uh, it's now nearly, nearly 10 years since Crick started to meet. And, and during that time, we've, we've had our meetings and we've had our discussions. And on two previous occasions, we have felt that we wanted to recognize and honor uh, a colleague very particularly. Uh, one was the principal of this college at the time, Sir Ralph Waller, uh, who had been enormously facilitating and encouraging, and, and some of you who've been around for a while uh, will know exactly how facilitating and warm he was. And he was actually an extremely significant and senior figure in the university. Um, and we gave him uh, an award. The other, uh, was Claude Manoli, who was the Secretary General of, uh, of the World Federation of Science. Sadly, he, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he helped us a great deal in setting up Crick, and, and we appreciate that enormously. Uh, but it's always been a profound honour and encouragement to relate with Dick Garwell. Dick's an extraordinary fellow. Uh, indeed, I, I have a book here in my uh, case, which is a biography of Dick, and it says on the front, biography of Dick Garwood, the most important scientist you've never heard of. <laughs> and he is. He has been described by some of the greatest people 
in the scientific world as a genius. This is not a word that is thrown about easily by people like Enrico Fermi and Edward Teller and so on. They, they only use this word extremely sparingly, but they have used it and it's been used on a number of occasions uh, about Dick Darwin. He uh, was a very bright young physicist and went into the work. Uh, uh, originally, he uh, qualified at the University of Chicago, joined the physics faculty there, uh, spent summers as a consultant to Los Alamos National Laboratory working on nuclear weapons, and he was the author of the actual design of the first hydrogen bomb in 1952. Uh, he was assigned to the job by Edward Teller, uh, and uh, he produced it. But having done that, he has spent a great deal of the rest of his life trying to find ways of making sure people did not actually use these bombs, that they were there, it was important that they were there, it was important that the, insofar as possible the right people had control of them in the right way, um, because without them, I mean, just think of what it might have been like if Hitler had had the bomb and none of the rest of us had. And what, what do we think the outcome of that would have been? It was actually important to develop something in order to protect. Um, but, but that's only one small part of what he has done. And many of the things uh, that you will know of, uh, you will uh, recognize immediately, but you won't necessarily know that Dick Darwin was there uh, at the back of him. He, was, he worked on the development of the first spy satellites. Uh, yeah, while he was at IBM, he worked on spin echo magnetic resonance, which led the foundations for uh, the uh, MRIs, which many of you will know are very important aspects of, uh, of, of health diagnosis and care. He worked on gravitational waves. And when you use your laser printer and touch screen monitor, what you won't have known is that he was involved in the development of laser printers and touch screen monitors. He's, he's been granted 47 patents and published over 500 papers. Uh, and right on through, uh, I, I can remember a number of occasions when he was called in to give advice on things like the Fukushima disaster, Lots of different areas, and, and, and when COVID emerged, and we started to have some meetings of the World Federation of Scientists to look at how to deal with the problem of COVID, uh, Dick was immediately in there saying, well, now this is what you need to do to try to make sure that they don't convey the infection and so on. And, and you might think that a guy like this would always be looking for some high-tech development on things. And I can remember very well when we were doing some early work on, on uh, on pandemics, Dick, and you were writing a paper about it, you had a whole series of things like telling telling the public that when they sneeze, make sure to sneeze into your elbow rather than sneeze out and breathe it all over everybody. And that was decades before the question of, of COVID and how we manage that. So, you know, here's a physicist with an extraordinary mind and capacity to think about things who developed some of the most remarkable high-tech instruments but he doesn't start by saying, let's get a high-tech instrument. He starts by saying, what's the best way of dealing with this problem? Can we understand the problem? And can we deal with the problem? Uh, but the other thing to say about him is, what an utterly delightful person he is, and, and how pleasant it has been uh, to work with him. And when I mentioned to colleagues that it, it seemed to me that we really needed to, to uh, recognize Dick and his contribution. And I have to tell you, I was, I was extremely wary of that because um, the other kinds of honors that he has had, and this is not even an honor, it's, it's just a recognition from friends who love and respect him, but he's been given the National Medal of Science, which is the United States of America's highest honor in the fields of science and engineering. Um, and he's received awards from the highest authorities in many, many countries. Uh, so I, I, was, I was very nervous about whether I should even suggest such a thing. Uh, and I contacted Rich and, and Scott and Harvey, and, and they all said, yeah, this is great. We absolutely, we ought to. Um, and, 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 but I was kind of nervous because, you know, this just doesn't compare with any of the other kind of recognitions. And I contacted Dick and Dick said, don't make too much of a fuss about it, John. Don't make too much of a fuss. And I thought, that's just it. Absolutely delightful. Um, a humble man who has nothing to be humble about because he has achieved such a lot, not just in science, 
and in technology, but in his work over many years for the well-being of humanity in many, many circumstances. Dick, it's, it's been an honour as well as a great pleasure to know you and indeed a great pleasure to know Lois, your wife, who sadly is no longer with us, but was a delightful person uh, whose company I very much enjoyed. And so in this very small way, uh, what I would like to do is to uh, present to you, and we have to do it, uh, we have to do it virtually because uh, you're a, a long way away from us at the moment, but it will find its way across to you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> And, uh, here I have to the camera. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Please and show your appreciation. And uh, John, thank you so much for this wonderful accounting of history and for your generosity. And that's uh, exactly how we got started together. And I so admire the work that you have done and your organizational and motivational ability, uh, which is tremendously important. So uh, this morning, actually, well, it has been a busy day for me. Yesterday, there was the New York Times article about the uh, my work in missile defense and how finally we got, I and Ted Postal, uh, got the American Physical Society to admit that they had errors in a major publication. But it's the, the, that story is not over. And this morning I had a half hour Zoom or unfortunately Microsoft Teams meeting <laughs> with, with, the, with the Pandemic Sciences Institute at Oxford and with a physicist in the physics department, uh, Shivaji Sandhi, uh, trying to do something further about not only this pandemic, but future pandemics. If you talk about uh, intractable conflict, there we have one. Psychology is extremely important only on one side because the conflict in principle is between the pathogen in this case, the virus or monkeypox, a different virus with different modes of transmission, and the human beings. But the human be beings are split, uh, very split, uh, fundamentally, intrinsically, and also uh, various uh, powers uh, make use of differences with the tools of modern communication, social media, and the like in order to reduce the capability to respond to these problems. So I hope you don't mind, but I've indicated that Crick does have a role in this intractable conflict of uh, humans against viruses. And I hope to put you in touch with the Pandemic Sciences Institute. We have a meeting upcoming the end of October, virtual meeting. So Wonderful. Thank, thank you so much for what I do regard as among my greatest honors and uh, keep up the good work. Dick, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> and we'll be delighted to work with the other colleagues here in Oxford. We'll also be delighted if and when the possibility arises for you to be able to join us uh, physically. Uh, but meantime, thank you very much indeed for all the work that you have done in the past for accepting this uh, modest award. And thank you for the inspiration that it is to all of us that you have engaged with us and continue to give us encouragement. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, farewell. Thank you. All the very best. Thanks.